Hello, chemistry students. Today we're going to talk about how we work the numbers in chemistry, how we figure out how many things we are dealing with, because it turns out that chemistry is a subject of numbers. Everything we do is going to come down to the number of this that reacts with the number of this. But because atoms are so very tiny, we can't just go around counting them up. So we have to introduce these new concepts and have new strategies to handle this. I'm going to introduce something called the mole. The mole is really important in chemistry, absolutely fundamental. And it's something that we'll learn how to use in this lesson. It's also very closely related to a very popular and famous number, so popular that we call it Avogadro's number, so it has a name. And these two things combined, they're very related, but both of them help us quantify the numbers here. So that's redundant. They help us quantify our atoms in chemistry. Let's take a simple reaction here to begin with. So I'm going to look at a reaction where I have two hydrogen molecules reacting with one oxygen molecule in order to produce two water molecules. Here's the numbers that I'm talking about. I need two of these for every one of these to produce two of these. Well, how do I know how many atoms or how many molecules I'm dealing with? That's the fundamental problem. If I'm doing this in a lab, there are only certain things I can measure. And what I certainly can't do is I can't go around with tweezers and be grabbing different atoms and counting them up. One, one thousand, two, one thousand. That's just not going to work for me. So that's the problem. Well, here's the solution. We can do something called counting by mass. And so I can take the mass of a sample and I can transfer that information into the number of items in that particular sample. So let's do this with something that's not even atoms. Let's just do it with jelly beans. How many jelly beans do I have? Well, pop your sample on a scale and get a measurement. Let's say 330 grams. Now, just that alone is not enough for me to get to my end goal of knowing how many I have. Many of you are probably recognizing that you need another piece of information. You need a conversion factor. You need to know what is the mass per jelly bean. So if I make one up for this example, 2.2 grams per jelly bean, then I can go through and I can use that conversion factor, do some simple math, and I can figure out that I have 150 jelly beans. Well, I can, can do this with anything. So let's look at some nails. I go to the hardware store. I put some nails on the scale, it is 6,480 grams. If I wanted to know the number of nails that I just purchased, I need to know that conversion factor. What is the mass per nail? And if I knew that number, then I could easily calculate the number of nails that I just purchased. Here we are at chemistry. Same thing is true. If I have a whole bunch of atoms and I want to know the number of atoms that I have, what I could do is I could weigh them. So I could figure out uh, what I have in front of me as a measurable by putting it on a scale and getting the mass here in grams. But I need to know this conversion factor in order to complete the calculation. Luckily, the periodic table has those conversion factors for me. And so if you look at the numbers that are underneath those elements on there, the average atomic masses, that's what you're being told. Those things are in a very particular unit, AMU, atomic mass units. And don't forget that they actually embody the average of all different possible isotopes for that element. And so carbon, it can be carbon 12, carbon 13, carbon 14. This is an average for all of those different possible isotopes. To fill this in a little bit more, the AMU is based on something very particular. First, start with carbon-12. Carbon-12 becomes the very special atom that we base all of this from. Carbon-12 has six protons and six neutrons in it, and we define, so by definition, we say that one carbon-12 would have an AMU of exactly 12. What we're saying is that an AMU is approximately equivalent to one proton or one neutron. Remember that not all protons actually have the same mass. It depends on what atom they are in. Same with neutrons. But this is going to be a nice rough guide. So that is a useful unit to us. That's something that can help us conceptualize our atoms and what's going on in their nuclei. 
However, it's not particularly useful in the laboratory when I have things like scales that measure in grams. So is there a set of units that would be more useful? It turns out there is if we're clever. I'm leading into something. We're going to find that we're able to define an AMU as a gram per mole. But in order to understand that, you need to know what a mole is. It always gets interesting in science. People are clever. They have figured out a way to make this just really convenient for us. And so this turns out to be an incredibly useful technique. Take this thought experiment where I have a scale sitting there and I come in and I have carbon 12 atoms, okay? And I have one carbon 12 atom pinched in the air and always be keeping in mind that that is the special atom that we define the AMU from. Okay, take that atom, drop it on the scale, see what the scale reads. The scale would read tiny number, 1.99 and some odd stuff times 10 to the minus 23, tiny, tiny number. Focus in on that one atom over there. What if I put 15 of them on? Well, now the scale is going to read 15 times as much. Fair enough. Still tiny number though. What if I put 200 on? It's going to read more, but it's still a tiny, tiny number. How many atoms would I have to put on the scale for the scale to actually read exactly 12 grams? The significance being that that 12 grams is really now going to coincide with the 12 AMU of those particular atoms. So that would be kind of useful and clever. What you need is you need 6.02 times 10 to the 23 of them. A huge, huge number, a giant number. But if I put that many on, then all of a sudden I would have this matching. Make sure you get this point. This giant number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23. If I put that many carbon-12 atoms on a scale, then the scale would read 12 grams. That gives me a connector, a linker between the AMU and grams, as long as I use that number. So some quick little math. I got 12 AMUs per carbon-12 atom. That's a given. Then I put this huge number on the scale. And when I multiply those two things together, I get 12 grams. So if I do some little math on this, I simplify it a little bit, I can get rid of some of my units and 12 will cancel from both sides of the equation. And I find that 6.02 times 10 to the 23 AMU is equal to one gram. That is now a conversion factor, a valid conversion factor for me to use. That number has more use than just that conversion factor for us in chemistry. It's the number I was saying that is so useful that we give it a name. That is Avogadro's number. So if you ever hear somebody talk about Avogadro's number, they're talking about 6.02 times 10 to the 23. We also would prefer yet another way to refer to that same number that's just easier to say, and the word is the mole. So the mole, I will call it a word number. Whenever you hear the word mole, you should associate a particular number with it. You do this all the time. If I say the word couple, you think two. Few, three. Dozen is 12. Baker's dozen, get an extra donut. If I have a gross, that's a dozen dozen. That's 144. And now, if I say mole, you should get 6.02 times 10 to the 23. The only thing that is new and different about the mole is that it is huge. But that is the scale of numbers that we need when we're dealing with chemistry and when we're dealing with atoms. So go back to the periodic table. Remember, you have your average atomic mass is sitting right there for all the different elements. And those things most directly are giving you units of AMU, atomic mass units. But now, if we hold on to that special number, we can also say that instead of an AMU, it's also equivalent to a gram per and then that number of atoms, or a gram per mole of those atoms. This is huge, and this really facilitates a lot of the things that we want to do in a chemistry lab. So let's go back to this reaction. Now I have uh, two hydrogen molecules, one oxygen molecule going to two waters. I want to know how I can measure these things out in a lab and be precise about it. So go find these average atomic masses on the periodic table. I've grabbed them for you for hydrogen and oxygen, the only atoms in this 
in this little reaction that we're dealing with. If I want to know what the uh, average atomic mass of the molecule is, because these are both diatomics, I need to take the, the individual atom, multiply it by 2, because it's H2 and O2, and then I get these new masses. That's the mass per mole of the molecule now. Also, off to the side, I could have there is my mass per mole of water molecules, two hydrogens plus one oxygen. Come back to this reaction for a second. Now we can do a little work. Let's go over here and look at this idea that I want to make two moles of water. So I'm just kind of making that up. I'm starting a problem here, an example. I'm going to grab that number that we just generated from the previous slide. We call those the molar masses. And so the molar mass of the H2O molecule is this 18 grams per mole number generated um, by just adding two hydrogens and one oxygen's atomic masses together. All right, I need that number and then I'm going to pull down the fact that I'm going to create two of these in this reaction. That's called the stoichiometry of this reaction. Then I can multiply these numbers together some stuff cancels out here for me and I find that I'm going to generate 36 and some change grams of water. Okay, let's move that number off to the side and let's go look over here at hydrogen. How much hydrogen do I need to add to this experiment, to this reaction? Grab those same numbers. I need two moles of H2 and I know that each mole of H2 has a molar mass of this two grams per mole number multiply them together, and then I'm going to get a little over 4 grams of hydrogen. I can do the same thing with oxygen, again grabbing the same numbers. Notice it's an implied one mole of oxygen from the stoichiometry of my reaction. There's no number in front of it. I only need one of those, one mole of those for every two moles of the hydrogen I was going to use. But anyways, I multiply the numbers together, stuff still cancels, and I find that I need almost 32 grams of oxygen. So look at the difference here. I need only four grams of hydrogen, even though I need two of them. And I need 32 grams of oxygen, even though I only need one of them for each time this reaction goes through. That is a measurable though. That's something that I can put on a scale in the lab. So chemistry tells me I need that. Fair enough. I, as a scientist, can go through and I can measure those out and I can do an experiment. So we come back to this idea that chemistry is a subject of numbers. So hopefully from this video you learned that the mole is a number word and it means 6.02 times 10 to the 23. That number is so important to us that we call it Avogadro's number and it's just going to come up time and time again in chemistry. There are two conversion factors that I'd like you to remember, which are that 6.02 times 10 to the 23 AMU is equal to one gram. But that also lets me say that one AMU is equal to one gram per mole. And that is very useful from the practical side of things from the periodic table. So hopefully you got it all figured out. Let your computer know if you did.